Code Spaces environments on both Visual Studio Code Spaces and GitHub Code Spaces are fully customizable on a per user basis and a per project basis. Let's see how we can customize them using dot .files, devcontainer.json and custom container images. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome back to Code Today. Today we are once again talking about code spaces. I already have two videos on this topic, a first look video in which I explore Visual Studio Code spaces and a second one in which I answer or try to answer all the mostly common questions about Visual Studio Code spaces and GitHub Code spaces. I highly encourage you to check them out if you haven't already. You find the link in the video description below. In this video instead, we will go deeper into code spaces, and in fact, we are going to see how we can customize our environments based on our needs. And keep in mind that whatever I will show you today works for both Visual Studio Code Spaces and GitHub Code Spaces. Before we start, just take a moment to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any other videos like this. There are three main ways to customize and personalize a code spaces environment dot files, devcontainer.json, and custom container images. And in this video, we are going through all of them. Let's start with dot files. So what are dot files and how can we use them with our code spaces environments? I've already covered this in a previous video and here you have a summary. If you're not familiar with dot files, those are files whom name starts with dot and they're normally used for providing additional settings or changing application behaviors. You can configure your dot .files and dot .file repository in a few different ways. In Visual Studio Code Spaces, you can link a repo where you have stored your dot .files to the code space at creation, as we see here. You can achieve kind of the same thing with GitHub if you create a repository in your account called dot .spaces. And remember that this works only with public repositories, not with private repositories yet. Every time you will create a new code space in GitHub, GitHub will look for this repository and start pulling out the files from it. Another way is to associate your dot .files after environment creation. To do so, just go to the settings, extension, Visual Studio Code Spaces and scroll down until you see the dot .files section. And same thing for GitHub Code Spaces. As you've seen, it is pretty straightforward. You just create your dot .files repository and then you either assign it at creation to your Code Spaces environment, or if you're using GitHub Code Spaces, you let GitHub taking care of that for you. Or on the other hand, you can personalize your existing Code Spaces environment using the settings section. I will not go more in depth on how to make dot .files, because that will be a two hours video by itself. And there are already plenty of examples on GitHub and even videos here on YouTube. Just search for dot .files and you will find everything you need. One final note on this. Using dot .files is referred to as a per user basis customization. And the reason for this is that whenever you create a new code spaces environment, especially if you're using GitHub, these dot .files will be automatically applied to all of your new environments. And this, of course, is true for you. If someone else trying to use your own code spaces or better, create a new code space environment on your project, they will not be affected by your dot .files. Let's move to the next way to customize your code spaces environment, the devcontainer.json file. Differently from the previous one, using devcontainer.json files is a per project basis customization. You can set up a default configuration for every new code spaces environment for a repository to ensure that all the contributors will have all the tools and the settings they need to work on that project. And that will apply to everyone and anyone creating a new code spaces environment on that repository. The devcontainer.json file can be placed in one of two places in a repository, in the root, prefix with the dot, as you can see here. So that will be dot devcontainer.json or like the example I will use in this video, inside a dot devcontainer folder as just devcontainer.json. So without the dot at the beginning of the name. I've chosen this one because it allows me to group other files that I may need and we will see those later. Let's go to VS Code and take a look at those files. First thing you'll notice is those files actually support JSON with comments, so they are JSON-C. But let's take a look at the structure of the file. I have four main sections here. The first one is this upport, and basically this tells code spaces 
to open the port 3000 in my case, but it can be also an array of ports as you can see here, and to forward them to your localhost. The second section here is called extensions and basically allow you to specify a number of extensions that you want to be installed in your environment at creation time. So every time you create a Cospaces environment, all of those extensions will be automatically installed. You will not have to do it manually. The third section is the settings one. And basically, this allows you to add to the VS Code settings.json file values at environment creation. For example, this Peacock extension over here requires some parameters. And in this case, I'm passing it the color I want for that theme. But this can be anything that goes into the setting.json files of VS Code. The last section, the post create common one, allows you to specify either a command directly or a file in your repository. And as you can see, I have it in .dev container slash post create sh. And this command or script will be executed as soon as all the other installation and preparation for your environment is completed. This can be useful, for example, like in my case, if I want to have the MySQL client installed and this is not in the default image. So instead of running manually the apt-get install command in the terminal of my code space every time I create a new one, I have this script that does it for me. And this is one of the reasons, as I mentioned before, that I prefer having the files in the .dev container folder so I can group them all together to keep it organized. I already have all the files in my GitHub repository. So let's go back to the homepage and open this with code spaces. So what code spaces will do at this point is grabbing my dev container.json file and execute whatever it is in terms of extension installation, personalization, and the execution of the script. You can immediately see that the theme is different. I have this blue bar with the pink notifications. And if we go to the extensions, you'll see that I already have all my extension installed. Last test we can do is if we go to the terminal and I execute MySQL, you'll see that I have the MySQL CLI or the MySQL client installed in this machine and is normally not present in the code spaces. Pretty cool, right? So every time someone needs to create a new code spaces environment for that repo, they will have everything they need already configured. Before we move on, click on the like button below if you think this video provides value to you or you find it insightful. All right, let's move to the next and last way to customize your code spaces environment using a custom container image for bootstrapping it. This is, as you can imagine, the most powerful and flexible way of customizing your code spaces environment, but of course is the one that requires the most work. Using a custom container actually builds on top of the dev container.json file method that we've seen. There is in fact a specific section of that file that we haven't seen yet that allows you to configure all the properties related to the custom container. When that section doesn't contain any configuration value, a container with the default image is provided, and that image has a number of tools and SDK installed, as you can see in this image, including the most popular frameworks like .NET Core, Python, Java, Node.js, and many more. Your custom container can instead contain anything you need. And this is very useful if you need to use, for example, a framework or an SDK that is not present in the standard image, or if you have to use some particular third-party package. And of course, there are some set of prerequisites that your custom container must fulfill in order to work with code spaces. The first set of prerequisites is the one from VS Code Remote Server, which basically includes the installation of Docker, VS Code, and the Remote Development Accession Pack. The second one instead is the set of prerequisites from LiveShare. Those depends on the Linux distro you're using, but usually are just few libraries. You can find the official documentation for all the prerequisites in the video description down there. As long as your image fulfills both of those prerequisites, you're good to go. What I personally recommend, at least at the beginning, is using the standard code spaces image as base image for your custom one, and then build on top of that. Once again, you can find the link for the standard image in the video description. Let's see how to do this. Let's start with the Docker file. As I mentioned, I'd recommend at the beginning using the standard image from code spaces and then build on top of that. 
So the standard image is this one, and I'm using the Linux variant. And then I decide to install the MySQL server and MySQL client on it, so my environment is more complete. Now, the question is, how I'm going to use this Docker file or this custom container image and assign it to my new Codespaces environment? I have another devcontainer.json, which has, as before, the sections for upward extension and setting and so on and so forth. But it also has this new section on top, which is about the container. This section allows you to specify a name for your environment and the Docker file to use to create your new environment. You can also specify some optional parameters like the remote user if you want some mounts and folders and some run arguments. I've copied those from the official image, but you can use whatever you want and whatever applies to your current situation. One thing to notice here is that you could use also the image directive over here and specify an actual image on any Docker repo. There is no real behavioral differences between those two. The only difference is that if you use the image, the spin up of the new environment will be faster because the service will just get the image from the repository and apply that to your Cospaces environment. While if you specify the Docker file, it will have to build up an image from scratch with all of your, your definition and instructions. But apart from that, so apart from the speed of bootstrapping of your environment, all the rest is the same. To check the full list of properties of this section of the devcontainer.json file, check the official documentation. You can find the link in the video description. To see it in action, I need to rename this file and also rename the custom image file as just devcontainer.json. I need to add the changes with a meaningful message and push it to the remote. Once this is done, let's just refresh to make sure. Yeah, we have it 19 seconds ago. Let's start with code spaces again and see what happens. As before, code spaces is grabbing my devcontainer.json file, but this time is not just installing extensions and applying personalization, but is also building the environment image from scratch using my Docker file. And in fact, you can see it here. The image is being created. And now it's done. Once again, all my customization are applied for themes, extensions, and so on and so forth. And if we go to terminal and we search for MySQL, we see that we have both the MySQL client and the different other parts for the MySQL server. Now we are running code spaces, but with our custom image completely customized. Cool, isn't it? One important thing to notice here though, keep an eye on the screen logs whenever you create a new code spaces environment using a new custom image. The reason for this is that if any problem occurs, that will be logged in the on-screen logs, but those logs will disappear after a few seconds and only a message saying code spaces failed will be shown. And the logs will not be retrievable after the fact, or at least I haven't found a way to do so. All right, that's it for today. As I've mentioned in the beginning of the video, the things I've shown you work for both Visual Studio Code Spaces and GitHub Code Spaces because they are basically the same service. Let me know in the comments section below what do you think about this customization method for Visual Studio Code Spaces and what you're using Code Spaces for in your day-to-day -day life. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave. Oh.